Hey everyone, John Reed here, author of the 50 Things to See with a Telescope book series, and I'm here just to do a simple unboxing of the 114 millimeter Newtonian reflecting telescope from Explore Scientific. And um, I really like this telescope because it's a really simple design, it's cost effective. I paid just a little over $100 for it uh, the Christmas of 2017 because it was on sale. Um, and I featured this telescope uh, as one of my recommended telescopes in 50 Things to See with a Small Telescope, and there's a similar telescope by Explore Scientific in my book, 50 Things to See with a Telescope for Kids. So here's the box. It seems to be packaged quite well. Um, this telescope was purchased from Ontario Telescopes because I'm in Canada, um, but you can also uh, buy it on Amazon.com or from Explore Scientific directly. Okay, so here's the telescope in the box. Alright, so we have any tape here. No tape there. Okay, no tape there. Wow, it's right up. Okay. Alright, it seems like this is the top here. So we have it on. This is a really nice box. And what I really like about this too is it's not showing you um, you know, pictures of Saturn or nebulas or stuff more so than you would actually see. The background has some nebulosity on it, um, you know, which you won't see in this much color through the telescope, but I'm not overselling it too much. All right, so what's in the box? Got some instructions here. We'll look at that later. Oh, this is, this is really nice. So we've got a unit power finder here. This is a red dot finder. So it creates a little holographic projection of a dot on the sky. Um, makes it super easy to find things. No finder scope. I'm not a fan of finder scopes anyway. You won't generally see them on my telescopes. I have one right here. Um, and I keep this as a backup for when my the battery dies in my unit finder. So that's, that's nice. I'll put that there. Okay, ah, this guy, this is cool. <laughs> okay, so this is a smartphone adapter, and what they've done here, maybe I'll do a close-up later, is they've got suction cups on one side and an elastic band, which is actually pretty ingenious, because my other camera holders for, you know, traditional cameras are really bulky, and this is a much, uh, more, much simpler design anyway, so that's great. Look forward to using that. Okay. Got some sort of T-ring adapter here. And an eyepiece. Let's take a look at this eyepiece. Okay, so it's a 25 millimeter fossil eyepiece. It doesn't have the field of view on it, but it's, you know, you've got a lot of glass in there. And it's a 1.25 uh, inch diameter eyepiece, so, so that'll be great. Okay, this looks like it's the optical tube itself. Yep, okay. Wow. This is a beauty. Empty box, throw that away. Um, with elastic bands again, no tape. This is great, really easy to get into. So, we've got a Vixen style mount here. So, this mount, um, you know, if I wanted to put it on a heftier mount like, like this guy, the Celestron AVX for astrophotography, it would go right on. Um, and then, hypothetically, you could use this to take pictures, and it wouldn't be half bad. Um, the downside is it only has a one and a quarter inch. Uh, focuser, so you won't be able to use the big two-inch adapters for the camera, but but I do have, and you can get uh, T adapters for your camera, and what you do is you put the eyepiece inside the adapter and then screw on your DSLR, and um, and you could take photos with this, and they'd be pretty, they'd be pretty good. Okay, another thing here, on the lens cap, you've got a hole. That, and you can open up this small, you know, two-inch diameter hole, 
And what that is for is for, it specifically says don't look at the sun, don't do that. Um, but it's for looking at the moon or Venus. And if you know anything about reflecting telescopes, is that any light that comes in from space comes in parallel, and the mirror, concave mirror, forms a full image from any light that hits that, hits that surface. So even though you've only got a small hole over here to the side that light can come in, you know, if you're using this feature, um, you're going to get a great image on, you know, through the eyepiece. It's just going to be a little bit dimmer than if you had the whole, um, the whole thing open just like that. You know, you can see the mirror in the back there. Okay, so to get this tissue off, what you want to do is open up the brackets here. You can lift the telescope out like this and take it off. Now there is some tape on that, not a big deal. There we go. So if you notice this is actually pretty pretty small. It's not it's not that big. It's definitely smaller than the four inch refractor. And that's you know partially to do with the Newtonian design. It's F4 or a little bit over F4, which means that it's only four times as long as the diameter of the mirror. So um, that's that's pretty good. And again, the way the way Newtonians work is you have a big reflecting mirror at the bottom, and then a secondary mirror at, here at the top that reflects the light from space in the eyepiece. Okay, so now we're going to put the telescope back in here. Screw this together nice and snug. So one of the disadvantages of reflecting telescopes, Newtonian telescopes, is that they need to be collimated. Now hypothetically this one should be good to go right out of the package, but you can see here, uh, this is the back of the primary mirror which collects the light from space, and you've got um, three screws and three dials here. So the three screws are probably what holds the mirror in place. So to collimate, and don't quote me on this, there'll be another, hopefully there'll be another video, either by me or someone else that shows you how to do this, or you can read the instructions, I know that's a lot less fun. But three of the screws loosen the mirror, and then the other three screws align the mirror, so you use it and it changes the position of the mirror in the telescope. And the idea is that you just want the light to be perfectly aligned out through the telescope and the eyepiece. And you can get a little device, so it's called a laser collimator, you shine it in, uh, or you can just look in through you know, some of the eyepiece, the eyepiece covers have a little hole in it. You look in there and you can see if the mirrors are perfectly aligned, just with your eyes. Okay, so that's the optical tube. It's actually pretty straight. I'm very impressed. Okay, I'll put that here for a minute. Okay, what's next? Oh, very nice. Okay, so this is my first look at the Twilight Nano Mount. At least this is the mount, mount head, I think it's called, right here. Okay. Okay, so that's pretty sturdy. I didn't even realize it came with this. So this is just a little bar, um, I don't know what you call this, a little, little adjuster pole here. And usually the way these work is you, you twist one way to loosen it, see if you can see it better like this. And then you can move the telescope up and down, or this is an alt-as mount, so this will be the altitude. Um, adjustment and then you to lock it in place you just screw it you just tighten it you know a twist okay so so that's great and then to adjust your azimuth which is your left and right um, you just turn it like that right. so here's the mount itself I've got an eyepiece holder right here it's made of plastic all right So again, this is a Twilight Nano mount that comes with the telescope. So I haven't read the instructions, but I'm going to assume that this guy goes on here just like this. And a lot of times the, the plate for the eyepieces, and this is the case with this mount too, it, it locks the mount in place. So this keeps the mount sturdy, so you need this you really want this in place before you use your telescope. Okay, here's the mount head. So 
Again, not reading the instructions because this telescope seems pretty simple. You know, I'm just going to slide that in place there and screw it in. Okay, wow, that is smooth. Not bad at all. Okay, the optical tube here. Um, yeah, again, pretty universal Vixen style mount. So what you want to do here is twist. Now we can loosen these up a little bit, not enough so that they open, but usually enough so that you can twist the telescope and point the eyepiece at a comfortable level. All right, we can take this little don't look at the sun warning off. Don't look at the sun with your telescope unless you've got solar filters that fit properly. Okay. So yeah, tighten, tighten. Okay, here's the unit power finder. Not sure if it comes with a battery. It does. Okay, yeah, we've got a little red dot in there. I'm not sure if you can see it, but that's great. So the on button is just on the bottom here. And then there's a screw on the bottom here, which adjusts left and right, because you want to align this thing so that the telescope and this unit power finder are pointed at the same spot in the sky. All right, so how does this go on? Okay, so it looks like it just slides in. Loosen the bolt here. Slides in from the top. Okay, there we go. Now the eyepiece. Loosen the two screws there. It looks like we've got a focal extender on here, so this may come off. Yeah, so this the telescope may be done right now. You could, you know, use it and look in space, look at things in space. But it looks like just in case you have other eyepieces or cameras that don't don't quite come into focus with the way it's set up, it looks like you can pop this guy off. And I, I'm betting that's what that's what this is, or for putting your camera on there. And usually when you use the eyepiece. Um, or when you use a, a camera phone to take pictures through the telescope, uh, you you have an eyepiece on there. You don't replace the eyepiece with just the camera. Okay. Anyway, so that's it. The uh, 114 millimeter reflecting Newtonian telescope on a Twilight Nano mount by Explore Scientific. And despite the fact that I've got three Explore Scientific telescopes, here, I'm not in any way sponsored by the company, um, even though I do promote these telescopes in my books just because I, I like them so much. Okay, everyone, uh, that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're new to astronomy, check out my books, um, 50 Things to See with a Small Telescope. Um, when you graduate from that, 50 Things to See with a Mid-Sized Telescope. And if you've got kids or you like pretty pictures, uh, 50 Things to See with a Telescope for Kids. Okay, anyway, thanks very much. Hope you enjoyed the video.